Welcome to Fiona's Food for Life YouTube channel, Cook, Eat, Nourish. I've got another interview lined up for you today. Make sure you listen to the end so you get their three tips to how you can cook today to become healthier. Please like and comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Hope you enjoy it. Good morning, Orla. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much. Would you like in to introduce yourself to my audience, please? Perfect. So um, my name is Orla McLaughlin. I'm a registered nutrition practitioner, and I guess I specialize in um, nutrition for anyone with autism, ADHD, any kind of mental health issues. And I look an awful lot around the, the gut as well, so the digestive health as well. So that's what I focus mostly on. Wow, fascinating area. Yeah, I really enjoy it and I have to say it's very, very, uh, no two days are the same, so it's really interesting. Great. And can you tell me a little bit about your career to date? Yeah, so I guess um, I didn't always do nutrition, so I guess I started out in um, business and marketing. So I went to college in NUIG and I did a degree in commerce. Um, and I guess probably even to go further back, um, I, had, I grew up in Donegal, I grew up on a farm very very normal childhood very very active kid and um was very classically healthy no major issues for me um apart from the odd sore throat um the odd being all of the time um so i suffered an awful lot with strep throat when i was younger um so i had a huge amount of antibiotics and stuff like that for that but then when i was older i kind of grew out of it there was no major issues and went to college and um Started getting a little bit panicky in college, I noticed, um, was a little bit more anxious and things like that, but just put it down to stress. But I had a really, really bad diet in college. Um, so my diet was literally um, pasta, chicken, sweet corn, very, very plain foods and very, very carbohydrate rich foods. Um, and then I finished there and went and did a, um, a higher diploma in marketing practice through NUIG down in, in, in Wexford. So I did that for two years and then again came back then to Dublin and did a master's in marketing. So. Uh, marketing was kind of my bag, absolutely loved it, loved the reasons why people bought stuff, I loved the consumer behaviour aspect side of things, really really into colour and all that kind of design element. Um, but then I, I, I realised then that uh, when I was working in the marketing capacity, um, we were kind of coming into the downturn and it became a bit of a superfluous department, it wasn't uh, hugely recognised, not, not recon it was recognised but wasn't hugely um, needed, so it was more sales. So I left and did a lot of travelling and things like that. And then I came back into Ireland and I, and I guess the height of the recession. So again, um, there was no work in marketing. So I used that opportunity then to upskill. So I went back to college and did nutrition, did that for four years. And then I did a master's in with Middlesex and personalized nutrition. Um, and I think it was at that point when I was studying, uh, was doing my master's in nutrition that a lot of what I was learning, I was relating back to myself. And I was trying to, because I had become quite sick in terms of, um, I developed what was known as cyclical vomiting, so I'd randomly get sick an awful lot. I developed IBS, I developed all of these kind of gut function issues and it was only through, you know, allowing myself to learn uh, what I was learning and applying it on myself that I was able then to, to heal myself through the right foods and through reducing stress and all of these various different things. So um, I guess a lot of that is why I would focus a huge amount on that. I did my, my thesis on um, the, the digestive health of neurotypicals versus kids on the spectrum. So I, I learned a huge amount between the gut brain connection and all of that kind of stuff. So I focus mostly on that and really, really enjoy delving into that um, for, for a lot of people these days. And so what stage was that you finished your master's? So I finished that in 2015. Okay. Um, and then I set up Health by Orla then after that. So um, I've been in practice now. Um, this has been my fifth year in practice, which is, uh, which is very exciting. Great. Yeah. And so what services do you offer at Health by Orla? So I offer a lot. Everything that I do is very personal to the person. So um, there's no one diet fits all. There's no one thing that suits, all, it suits everyone. So I look at everyone in a, in a holistic format in terms of everything that's going on in their life as well. So um, diet, nutrition, lifestyle, all of those kind of things. Um, and I offer one-to-one -one consultations, but I also do an awful lot of programs as well for um, kids that would have autism, kids that have um, ADHD, things like that. So we do maybe four to six month programs where we look at the diet specifically. We look at maybe taking out any of the higher allergen foods, maybe taking out any foods that they're not able to process. 
um, and look a huge amount into the foods that we can get in and look at uh, various different things because the biggest thing that I try to do is improve the functionality of that gut because if a child comes to me and they're constipated for maybe three or four days, it's all about improving the functionality of that because remember the, the gut and brain are connected so once you have a lot more functionality there, you can improve cognition a little bit more with that as well. Okay, and so would most of these be one-on-ones where you were saying the programs with the kids or are they uh, group programs or online programs, it's all... No, it's all, it's all one-on-one, -on -one. Um, okay. so I would meet with people uh, once a month or we would do phone calls as well, we do online phone calls um, because all of these things, it's working through you know, there could be challenges with school, there could be challenges with getting meals in a break time, there could be lots of behavioural issues, lots of tantrum issues, all of these various different things. So it's looking at the small changes that we can make and the sustainable changes that we can make, because these things are hard. Changing your diet is really, really hard, particularly um, in a population where they're only eating like maybe five foods, you know, so there's a lot of fear around changing that food as well. Um, because then you have trust issues with the parents. You know, if they're if they're trying to if they're taking away uh, a food that they love and then you know they don't get it again, then they tend not to eat anything further to that. So um, for me, it's looking at doing that in a very controlled and very structured way and looking at improving the health of the gut as well uh, in tandem with that. So you're then in a better position then to make change and to allow new foods to come into the system. If that makes sense. Okay. And so how would somebody find you? Would they be referred from a GP or how do you generally connect first with your customers? Yeah, good question. A lot of my, um, a lot of my referrals at the moment are, are um, word of mouth, but I am trying to target GPs in terms of um, getting them to think about diet and getting them to think about the functionality of food and the power that the right food can do. So um, I think that will be something that will start to change a little bit more in, in, in the coming years and months. But um, I do think, yeah, referrals for me would be mostly word of mouth and, and kind of clients that I've had before that would have said, okay. you know, um, I did really well on this and this really, really helped um, and, and, and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's been really, really helpful and really, really positive so far. Great. And, and whereabouts are you based now? You're not in Donegal anymore? No, not in Donegal. So I'm based in Malhide in uh, Dublin or in Dundrum in South Dublin as well. So um, on, on, on both sides of, of Dublin. Fantastic. So, yeah. Okay. So if we were to take a look at, say, nutrition and depression, ADHD, bipolar, ASD, did, uh, did you do your thesis on that? Am I correct? Yes. 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 Can you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe give us a few examples and, and what you learned. And yeah, absolutely. So there's a huge amount, um, as I was saying, so the gut and the brain are connected. So it's a bi-directional system. So if you have what's known as leaky gut, you will there, you know, in, in, inevitably have leaky brain as well. So there's a huge amount of that in the research. But for me, what it is, is it's looking at making small changes that can improve functionality. Um, that's that's the only thing I'm looking at is improving the function. So the, the movement of that bottle every single day or um, the ability to learn and develop and things like that. So for example, I guess um, I had a, I, I had, I'll give you two examples. I had a kid that um, we did, we made really, really simple changes. Um, and that was the, the, the mother request that she was like, you know, he tends to get very, very overwhelmed. He had ASD, he has ASD and he tends to get very, very overwhelmed. So making decisions was a huge aspect for him. So even like going shopping or picking out any kind of clothes or anything like that, it, it was impossible for him. And he used to kind of get really upset and, and uh, didn't enjoy it. So we had to make smaller changes and he was 11. So he was on board with all the changes, which was amazing. So um, the only thing that we did was we removed gluten from the diet, that was it. So we changed, we kept his meals exactly the same. So if he was having Cheerios for breakfast, we did gluten-free Cheerios. If he was having a wrap, we did gluten-free wrap. That was it, that was all we changed. So his meals essentially were the same. But within four weeks, he was a completely different boy. Like he went to, so his confirmation was coming up, he went into the diesel shop went in and bought a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, was absolutely delighted, tried them on, no problem at all, very, very calm child. And you know, that was the only one small thing. And I remember the mother ringing me going like, or like, I can't believe, like he's just, he's so nice to be around. Um, not that he wasn't, but he was just an awful lot more upset and more frustrated, which in turn was, you know, hard for the mom to see and the dad. So it was really, really nice to see that just that kind of calming effect that it had. Um, so that was only, only one small thing. And, and then another example of a child who had um, autism and he worked with me for four months and he had gone down the gluten-free and dairy-free route before I, I saw him and the mother had seen absolutely no changes as well. So that's another thing to note that, you know, I think the research says that it's only successful about 65% of the time removing those, those higher allergen foods. So in his case, it wasn't actually effective at all. He didn't get any benefit from it. 
um, which is why I thought it would be a nice example to, to share. Yeah. So what we did then is we furthered that and we removed grains completely from the diet. So we removed anything, wheat, rye, barley, any of those, rice, all of those kind of things. And within, I'd say, now she, the, the mum mentioned in the first five days, it was quite tough. And he was only kind of like picking at different things. But then after that, he was absolutely, he was so cognizant and he was just an awful lot more, um, you know, aware of his environment. So that was one of the biggest things that he wasn't aware of his environment at all. Like he didn't, you know, yes, he was crossing a road, but he didn't really know of the dangers or anything like that. So he was starting to learn an awful lot and we had, you know, allowed him to do that, which was amazing. So the, the mum rang me because he used to always take his little um, bus to school every single day, this little toy bus. and. Um, it, it had become something that he was very obsessive about and if he didn't find the bus there was like tantrums in the morning leaving the house it was all very chaotic but um, I remember she rang me and he you know like this is maybe two weeks later um, he just was kind of like no mommy don't need the bus um, absolutely fine going to school today and didn't from then on didn't need the bus so you know small little behaviours like that the change made an absolutely massive impact upon his and her life uh, and the family's life as well. So just that level of calm, leaving the house in the morning, not having everything so stressed and so stimulated, um, you know, and the mum could go by her day in a very, very relaxed manner, knowing that her kid was happy and, you know, there was no frustrations there or anything else. Um, so yeah, small little things like that. It's, it's knowing, you know, everyone is so personal. You, you know, there's a really, really nice quote about autism and it's, you meet one kid with autism, you meet one kid with autism. And that's, that's exactly it. So you have to kind of go through and see what's what's doable what's achievable for the child but and also see what's kind of their internal environment so you know have they been exposed to a huge amount of um you know medications or antibiotics or anything like that which which will get rid of all of the infection which is great but it also will get rid of all of their good flora so making sure that we're setting the gut up right from from then on is there an overgrowth of yeast um is there any kind of other bad bacteria there that we need to get rid of uh, and then making sure that you're putting in the right nutrients and the right nutrition from then on. So looking at the B vitamins as being a huge um, aspect to that methylation pathway, to that ability to detoxify, all of these things are hugely, hugely important and beneficial. And you know, the, 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 the balance is you're met with a kid that will only eat maybe five foods. So it's really, really hard to get the, the right foods in, but it's working with the health of the gut to open up that taste profile. So, you know, making sure that zinc is in there, making sure that B6 is in there. So it's, it's, it's not an overnight, it's not something that happens just like that. It is a process, it is hard work, but it's also the most rewarding if you can get a kid to move their bottles that hasn't been moving the bottles in four days. Like, I mean, you can imagine that yourself if you're going around and you're constipated mm. and you're sluggish, you feel crap, you know? And then if you're a non-verbal kid that doesn't have the ability to express that, you can only express it through maybe tantrums or some form of frustration. Um, it's it's really really hard for the child to you know to, to kind of go through that. So it's making sure that that bowel function is there is is is, is really really important. So it must be really rewarding to see those changes that you know and, and being able to help someone in, in those scenarios. Absolutely, right? yeah. Like I find that the most satisfying when like a parent can ring you up and say like you know it's just amazing that I slept through the night or that you know. Um, he wasn't in fits of laughter or fits of hysterics before you know he went to bed um, so he was able to like self-regulate and able to kind of like calm himself down or herself and you know sleep through and I think those are the biggest things it's it's the small things but it's the big things that make such a difference in a family life because family life is chaotic it's you know there's always hustle and bustle there's always something happening so it's just it's really really nice when you can get those moments of, of calm and when things kind of just slot into place it's just yeah it's, it's pretty amazing Great. Yeah. Okay. So I always like to ask the people I'm interviewing, can you give three tips that um, the people can use now to help improve the health of the nation? What three tips would you give? Okay, so one that I one that I would definitely give and put the most kind of um, importance to would be that relaxation piece because for me I think stress has been a massive factor in my life and um, I think we, I just, I listen to um, Dr. Robert Sapolsky a lot and he talks a huge amount about stress and I think he's, he's an amazing lecturer, but um, he talks about stress in, in modern day words. So for example, we, we, we used to have um, a stress where like it was, it was a physical stressor. So we'd be running away from a saber toothed tiger, um, you know, and we'd be engaging the sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight. Um, and in that moment we are, you know, putting like physiologically what's happening is we are, you know, putting glucose through our muscles so that we can, our thigh muscles, so that we can run and get out of there. Our cognition is increased as well, so we're more aware, which is brilliant. And then we come over here, we're safe, we turn it off, which is a fantastic system. 
and still in this to this day will works like that which is fantastic but the difference being with that word to our modern world is that we turn the stressors on all of the time for psychological stressors so we're stressed about mortgages we're stressed about relationships we're stressed about work or boss whatever that is you can insert whatever um, and we in an effect don't turn off that system as much so we have this constant kind of we're in the state of sympathetic dominance all of the time so we don't engage the parasympathetic so parasympathetic is the rest or digest so what I would try and say to people is if, if there is something that you can do and be aware of stress in your body, where do you hold it? Mm -hmm. So is your body like this all of the time? Do you, are you stressed out when you're eating? So when our body is in that state, digestion is naturally shut down. It takes too long. Digestion takes about four hours. So when you're running to the petrol station to get your sandwich or you're, you're thinking about the, the call that you have with your boss or whatever, you're not digesting your food. Um, reproduction is shut down and tissue repair, all of those things are shut down because they take too long. So if you can imagine being in that state all the time, those systems are compromised. So it's looking at ways that you can try and bring some of that parasympathetic, that rest and digest back into your life. So can you look at meditation? Can you look at deep breathing in the moment? Can you look at journaling or writing stuff down or however you can vent or get that out? Is really really important and I think there's so many different activities out there now that are just amazing that you can you know try and relate to and try and, 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 and choose something but I think it's not it's it's not enough to think that TV is, is, is a relaxer you know so again it's looking at can you get out for a walk can you meet with friends can you do something that brings you joy so that would be my biggest you know my biggest tip first is try and do something that makes you feel relaxed where you don't have to think about time where you can kind of switch off essentially because that's that's where lots of other stuff and that's where lots of other things will happen that's where the gold is you know because a lot of a lot of things get leached when you're in that sympathetic dominance like you know magnesium and all of those kind of things so it's looking okay. at ways that you can try and you know bring your body back into that state of balance okay that's tip number one tip number one okay um tip number two would be looking at um let me see, what would I say for tip number two? Um, would you say in your current diet and how you Oh yeah, are, actually, yeah. that's a really, really good thing. So looking at seeing how, um, how your current diet works for you. So I always think about, if you can try and think about your diet like um, petrol in a car. If you uh, put petrol in a car, it functions, it goes perfectly. Um, but if you're looking about your current diet, you know, things to think about is, are you moving your boils every single day? Are you getting up out of bed feeling relaxed, feeling refreshed, feeling ready and energized for the day? Are you sleeping through the night? Are you a, a, are you a calm kind of, um, you know, behaviorally, are you a calm person to be around or do you lose your temper really, really quickly? Or what, you know, what is your disposition in that? So looking at all of those different markers and seeing how your current fuel is, is, is fueling you or your current food. So a lot of the time it's diesel in a petrol car. I think that's the way we try and function, but it's not sufficient. So making sure that you're not putting loads of sugar in there, you're not putting loads of processed foods in there. Um, but that's what I would say to people is assess how your current food intake is, 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 is helping you. Is it helping or is it hindering? Uh, because that is the biggest, that is, the, that is where you can make the most changes is when you know that, well, actually at three o'clock, I always have, you know, um, a cereal bar or, and, and then I slump, then I feel absolutely knackered 20 minutes later, or like I actually, I keep snapping at that person that comes up to my desk. Um, so again, look at those kind of examples throughout your day and see, is there any ways that you can make some small changes within, within your day to try and, and try and help that and fuel yourself that little bit better. Um, great. I like the analogy with car. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's quite simple. People can get it. Yeah. Um, and then thirdly, I would say, um, what else would I say? I would talk about, um, Is it about the whole body that it's not necessarily just exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I would say stuff about like in terms of equating health for me, a lot of people equate health with weight uh, and weight loss. So I often try and think about in, in terms of a more like the bigger picture, think about your mental health, think about your skin health, think about your energy levels. Do you have energy in the evening to play with the kids or put the kids to bed? Or are you absolutely knackered when the weekend comes around and you can't function? You know, um, look about your health in that way so that you then have a, a more defined pathway to look at changes that you can make rather than thinking about, I need to lose a few pounds. You know, think about, well, I want to have more energy. I want to feel better in my day. I want to actually feel happier, feel more motivated. Um, because when you start to, when, if, if you're feeling really low, when you're feeling really sluggish and, you know, you're not going to want to do all of these things as well. So again, it's looking at ways that you can maybe 
you know, reduce the sugars, reduce the alcohol, reduce the cigarettes, all of these negative things, but look at that as being a big um, uh, achievement in health rather than just thinking, I need to lose four pounds, I need to, I need to, because it becomes about deprivation and, and, and feasting and that's not what we're wired for that's not how we function so rather than this good and bad analogy think about things that you can try and you know just I, I want to try and improve my skin I want to try and improve my mental health I want to try and improve my energy levels and I want to be able to actually sleep through the night all of these things we are wired to be able to do and you know and improve that functionality so they would probably be my 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 top three Great tips, no. if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, really interesting tips, yeah, and, and easy to apply. Hopefully, Great. hopefully. Thank you. So, one of the questions I was ask, like to ask is, what would you choose as your last meal? Oh, this is a really, this is a really, I struggle with this actually. It's a really, really interesting question for me because food, I love, I love food. And I grew up on a farm and, you know, um, there's food all the time in my granny. So, I would probably say, like, modern day, my probably last meal is going to be some form of poached eggs, avocados and sourdough bread because it's just delicious. Um, but I'd say my childhood would probably be my granny's um, soda bread. Absolutely love that and her tea. Um, that would probably, and we have in, in Donegal, we have what are known as like cookies, like Daniel Aldorni cookies. They're like a, a savoury bap. Um, I think the Waterford has the blah. We yeah, have, we have a cookie. Um, so we used to get that with ham, and it was like my favorite Saturday lunch. So I think those kind of small things would probably be my last meal if I was on death row. Yeah. Okay. Great. Would yeah. you have anything to drink with that? I would. I I'm a I love tea. I don't drink coffee. I just don't like it. But I love tea, and I probably go like a green tea or something like that would probably my be my my tea of choice. Okay. And if I was to have something sweet. Um, it would probably be some form of chocolate in the newer sense of the word in terms of like a dark chocolate or a cocoa powder with, you know, with nuts or something like that in terms of a protein ball or um, your little, your little square. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. So though that kind of something okay. sweet, yeah, would be, I'm not, I don't have a huge sweet tooth. Um, to, to be honest, I did. I did have a huge sweet tooth when I was younger, but um, I, I've since kind of, my taste profile has changed massively. So that's been a really good thing. But uh, yeah, if I did, I would have that. Okay, fantastic. And would you mind telling my audience how they can get in touch with you? Absolutely. So um, you can contact me through my Facebook page, which is Health by Orla. I'm on Instagram as well. Um, and my website, healthbyorla.ie. And it's Orla, O-R-L-A. Exactly. Yeah, yeah perfect. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks Great. for having me. Thanks for watching today's video with Orla. I hope you enjoyed that and you got some information from it. I certainly learned loads. Please like and comment below and tag us both in. And why not check out some of my other videos like the power bars that we spoke about or maybe the Irish brown scones, not quite the soda bread, but the nearest that I have. Thanks for watching. See you soon.